Hello mate and welcome back to Render Review. This week we got some really awesome uh, submissions so before we jump into that I'd just like to say a huge thank you to everybody for subscribing and hitting the notification icon that really helps me out. And an even bigger thank you to my members and patrons your names will be running across the screen at the end of the video. First up is this submission by Jason Middleton. What we got is a young lady you know it seems to be staring off into distance and having a little walk it's a nice deforced dress on her looks really effective the way that she's posed and that the dress is draping off of her you can see there's no clipping on her limbs or around her legs which is sometimes difficult to pull off with these outfits the hair looks really realistic and that is one of the things that really helps to make an image look realistic is the hair i think you'll find if you look back over the history of render review you'll find that one of the things that a lot of artists stumble on is the hair looking realistic or the light being too bright so it shows off the geometry or perhaps just not posing the hair in a way that looks like it matches the angle of the head gravity does affect hair quite severely in most cases and because this is a short hairstyle with it, with it in buns, you don't have that necessarily as an issue, but the hair just, it looks nice and realistic, so that's good. And the expression, it is a blank expression, but it kind of suits the mood. I think she would look more weird if she had a big grin on her face or a big frown on her face. So it's just a nice effective use of, uh, you know, kind of casual expressioning, just having a little bit of a wander along the street, doing what kids do, staring off into the distance, not really paying attention to what's going on around them. Also a really nice use of depth of field here. I feel like that's a key element in this image is that because there is quite a busy amount, there's a lot of stuff going on in the background up in this area up here. Um, the fact that there's depth of field used to draw your attention away from it back to the character is really solid and really good. A nice amount of kind of post work done here as well. Overall, really solid first uh, submission from Jason Middleton. Really, really happy with that. Um, if I was going to improve anything, honestly, I don't know if there is anything that I would change about this image. I think it's pretty effective in what it's trying to convey. It's using the same level of depth of field that I would probably have used. The lighting's really nice. There's a, a, a HDRI lighting, which is throwing the correct amount of light across the entire scene. And it's not overly blown out in any areas and it's not too dark in any areas. We've got a really nice level of um, contrast in here. So overall, if I was the person who made this image, I'd be really chuffed with myself. That's for sure. So really good effort there, Jason. Well done. Um, keep the good work coming. Next up is this submission from Darko Dortovic and it's a Viking-esque looking warrior stood in kind of a uh, stony crypt. This has, has a very much a Skyrim kind of feel to it actually. It looks like you know one of those uh, Draugr ruins and you look like you're the slightly um, underdressed uh, Dragonborn creeping through the cave looking for Draugr to kill, maybe looking for treasure or something of the like. So this is um, a really effective render. If you look down at the feet, you'll see that there's really good contact with the ground. There's no clipping that I can see and there's a good shadow just where the feet touch the floor, which gives you a real feeling of gravity and that the character is actually touching the floor, which is really, really good. I'm really impressed by that. The landscape itself is quite nice. You can see that there's a good level of uh, bump mapping on the surfaces. I know it's weird to talk about the quality of the shaders, but it's really effective in its build. So whoever made this particular asset is uh, deserves a pat on the back because that's really good. It's probably, it may be only a vignette, but it looks really effective. So well done. But anyway, back to the rendering itself. Nice use of one single light source. So it's probably a bit of a fill light in there just to pick up the shadows because if this were just one light source coming in from down there the shadows on the thighs and the stomach would be a lot harsher so there's either some light being bounced around off the walls of the scene or there's a smaller light source probably coming in from the very front of the character just to lift those shadows up a little bit so that's again really effective because it hasn't harmed the uh, contrast of the image at all 
and it still gives you the sense that this is a dark crypt which is you know ready to be explored by whoever's brave enough to go in there overall i like the uh, the outfit i know that darko probably isn't the person who built the outfit this is probably a bought in store um, content but again the way that it matches the character's overall pose and shape really is effective in this case and of course obviously there's been some posing tweaks here because as you can see it you can see there's decent contact with the sword's grip there it doesn't look like it's uh, unusual and then the sword is actually resting on the shoulder there's no visible clipping there either so again a really good attention to detail played with posing and the fit of the outfit and everything there uh, it's hard to see the expression because the face is covered with a mask but there's a nice catch light there if you look really closely you can see there's a little bit of light shining in the eyes to show that the eyes are there and that's really important in this kind of shot because if there wasn't a catch light to put a sparkle in the eyes there you wouldn't be able to see it and you would be forgiven for mistaking this person for some kind of zombie or monster that didn't have any eyes there's a little bit of um, face wall paint there as well looks really good um, generally really really high standard of render there again um, I'd be really impressed with this really happy with this if this were my own work so once again really good effort there Darko keep them coming my friend awesome work next up is a submission from the real Quetzalcoatl and as you can see it's a young lady drawing her teddy bear so ignoring the realism of the props because I think everybody would be in agreement that the prop is clearly um <laughs> it's it doesn't look like a teddy bear but that doesn't matter in terms of the quality of the render so what we can see is the young lady's got a suitable amount of light on her face from a light source that's over off in that general direction and it's casting a nice sort of shadow there and then there's another light source coming in from up here which is creating this highlight on the back of the hand and giving us this shadow here so it's, it looks like she's in a sort of normal living room kitchen environment with the overhead lighting and then maybe like a table lamp off to the side here that looks really good nice use of props and debris often something that's overlooked in this kind of shot because people think oh they're focusing so much on the character but adding little bits of debris and things like that can make a huge amount of difference in realism of these kind of shots so ignoring the fact that the teddy bear doesn't look like a real teddy bear it's it's still good to have the props around and then as you can see what she's drawing on her pad matches the teddy bear so i don't know if this is a store-bought prop with those things included in the prop but uh, again it looks really good and the fact that the pencil is ma matching the edges of the drawing again that's also a really nice touch there and the way that she's holding the pencil um mostly oh you know she looks like she is i don't know many people who hold the pencil halfway up but that seems like a really nitpicky thing to talk about when we're talking about the quality of render so overall i'd be really happy with that one the pose again the way that she's touching her face and um, the light reflecting off the finger and onto the side of the face and things like that i know that that's more eye race fault than um, the real quetzalcoatls but again that adds to the realism of the shot because you feel like that's real light being bounced around Nice use of a Christmas type sweater. I don't know if that is a Christmas sweater, but it looks like one. So it's very appropriate for the season. Also nice use of props in the background. As you can see, there's a little um, bag there. Some of you might not have even noticed that. Um, and then there's some books and things in the background there as well. So, it, you know, it looks like a young girl actually studying or, or you know, doing stuff. And um, she's got all of her study stuff in the background. So again, really appropriate. It's worth mentioning the hair here as well. As you can see, these little flyaways, they're all very, very nicely done. Again, possibly not the real Quetzalcoatl's doing, but the hair prop is really solid in that the, the render has caught these flyaways. What that says to me is that the image hasn't been overly noise reduced because there's still fine detail like that in there. And if you look at the back of the hand, you can see the detail in, in the skin and the knuckles, the little veins on the back of the hand and things like that. So it's nice to see that. If I were going to change anything in this image at all, I might tone down the light coming from above. Because what you can see is that there's a little bit of a glossiness appearing in the back of the hand there. The tops of the knuckles are a little bit there as well. And they're 
And what it's doing is it's giving the skin a little bit of a plasticky quality, which it just, just takes a little bit of the realism back out of the image. It's difficult to pull off because you want this shadow on the pad and you want the image to be lit correctly, but at the same time, maybe it's worth looking at the skin surfaces for the hands and just reducing the glossy layered weight a little bit just to reduce that reflection of that light above just a tiny little bit. Either way, that's a really solid render. I'd be really happy if that were mine. So great job, Ketsukotl, and I will look forward to seeing more submissions from you in the future. Last up is a submission from PPS Mole, and this is a kind of scar uh, skull dude holding fire. It's got very much a dead by daylight kind of feel to it, which I like. Um, this is actually an interesting use of negative space and post-production for sure because what you can see is that there is actually nothing in the background. The only thing of interest in the scene is the character himself and we've got, uh, I'm going to guess, either a really well made um, HDRI or two main light sources. You've got the, the blue light source coming in from sort of uh, 45 degrees from the front which is creating this nice blue highlight here and that color is designed specifically to contrast the orangey red light coming from this direction or the perceived direction of the hand and this flame which is creating the main red highlight here and those two colors complementing each other quite nicely in fact green and it's kind of opposite sides of the color spectrum for those of you that are familiar with the color wheel. So I don't know how much of this character design was done by PPS Mole themselves or how much of it is bought, how much of it is a costume, but we've got a really nice kind of tattoo motif. You can see there's one on the forearm there. You've got a big one on the back and then one on the forearm over here as well. And then it looks like there might be one on the chest there as well. Overall, really nice detail. There's a nice level of kind of grainy, gritty detail added here that makes it look realistic. The flame doesn't look overly fake. I mean, it's not quite photo real, but it's not by any means a bad effort either. It, uh, it does the job anyway. Um, it is the brightest thing on the screen, so I do find myself sort of looking at it, um, find my, my attention is drawn to it rather than the character's face. But when I kind of make myself look at the character's face, I'm impressed by, again, the level of detail there and the expression. And it is clearly eye contact looking at the palm of the hand as well, which is something that a lot of people overlook. So, you know, the character is looking in the correct direction. So, you know, there's a, a lot of negative space here, but the ex but the way that the, the image is composed with the character on the rule of thirds line and the flame kind of encroaching on the other rule of thirds line as well it makes you comfortable looking at it nothing kind of jarring going on here so yeah, really solid image really good really good first submission from PPS Mar. looking forward to seeing more stuff in the future that you can do with perhaps different kind of scenery and stuff so awesome thanks very much for your submission my friend all right, guys, that about wraps it up for this episode. As you can hear, my voice is going. Um, thanks very much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below and keep those submissions coming. Visit www.thundorn.com. See the submission guidelines and also see a gallery of past submissions on there as well. And I will see you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves. All right, bye-bye.